All right, welcome back party people. I have got a bunch of projects to complete in the next few weeks. I've got to put brake pads and rotors on the van. I've got this leaky backflow here that I need to fix as well. It did pass inspection last time, but I noticed when I went to turn up the sprinkler system, I've got a leaky joint here and I've got a leaky joint here. The threads on the schedule 80 are just totally jacked up i don't know if they were over tightened or what but you can see they're kind of folded over on themselves the other project that i've been working on is the electric power washer i noticed when h money was using the power washer last time it would uh, you could hear the pump come on for like a second and then cut off come on for a second cut off and it kept cycling like that so i looked at the end of the uh the actual sprayer and uh it was leaking just a tiny amount of water so just enough water to click the uh the pump on uh, so it was losing just enough pressure for the pressure switch to activate and the pump would uh, turn on and then uh, it would pump itself up to enough pressure to uh to click the pump off so i took the handle apart to see what kind of valve is in it and this is what we've got here so i'll just flop this open real quick so what we're dealing with here is this uh this little valve here and these are all these twist connect uh, valves and the handle just pushes down on this spring here and that activates the, uh, the water flow the only problem is I've kind of taken this part a little bit and tried to uh, make sure there's no particles or rust in there but it still leaks and I couldn't find this valve part by itself you guys let me know in the comments down below if you can find this somewhere but what i did find was a, to a whole this part of the, this handle piece here and it already had the internal so i swapped that out so but that's not what we're here to talk about today <laughs> Today is this fan, actually not even the fan, it's more this 12 volt cable here. So right now I have this fan plugged into uh, an AC adapter that converts everything to 12 volt DC. And you can see, fan works great. Let's take it over to the van. All right, so that's plugged into my 12 volt van outlet and we get nothing. And I know my 12 volt outlets work because they run other things. There's something wrong with this cable. So I'm hoping that it's something I can repair. But, uh, let's dissect this thing and have a look at it. All right, what would we expect to find in here? First, we expect to find a fuse, that's for sure. The other thing we would expect to find in here is something to help us isolate and regulate DC. Knowing anything about car 12 volt accessory outlets, you know, they really were made to run a cigarette lighter, which is nothing more than a heating element. So over the years, they've certainly gotten better, but they are highly variable as far as the DC voltage um, based on the amount of current that's being drawn by the load. I expect to find some type of inductance circuit in here, uh, like a coil. Uh, a DC to DC regulator maybe maybe um, these things are fairly cheap I don't know it might be on a chip who knows uh, let's take this thing apart I'm gonna start out doing the simple stuff I'm gonna check the fuse in the end here so just about all of these 12 volt accessories you can pull the tip out and what you'll get is a fuse Let's see if I can get a close-up on that for you. And there's the fuse. It does not look blown whatsoever. Well, let's just double check it real quick. And I'm going to do that. There's a bunch of ways that you could do that. But I'm just going to go in here and do a continuity check with the old uh, multimeter or multimeter. So if we have continuity across this thing, we should be hearing a beep here. All right. So the fuse is definitely not blown. And there's a spring in here as well, so don't lose your spring, All right? So there's a spring right there. And the way the tip works is you have this piece that fits right down into the tip like that. And it's spring-loaded, 
so the tip pushes the spring into the other end of your electrical connection inside the 12 volt so, uh, plug here. So uh, let's dissect this thing. I'm going to take this little metal ring off because we're going to have to open this thing up. So I'm going to take this screw off. So let's do that. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It could be something simple. It could be something that we can't fix. But, you know, when it comes to electronics or electrical stuff, I'd like to at least to know. Will this thing come apart pretty easy? Yes. All right. Look what we have here. We absolutely have no regulation going on whatsoever inside this thing. So, uh, they're relying solely on the voltage supplied by the uh, supplied by the vehicle so you know there you go and what we already found out is that we are missing interestingly enough one of our wires have come disconnected here and it looks like the other one is not in that great of a shape either. I'm going to split these a little bit. You can see here we have no hot connection whatsoever. And I find typically this is the case with a lot of these types of things. Get vibration, you know, people throwing the cables around and the tips come off. Let's get our wire strippers. Let's get our soldering iron out and see if we can get the connection going back to this piece and get it back together. We might need to fix that one a little bit as well. Get you a close-up shot of that. You can see there. So this wire was just hanging. It should be soldered just there. You, you can see the bead of solder right there. All right, we've got our soldering iron out. Let's turn this thing on and warm her up. This could be either the shortest video in history or the longest one in history. Depends whether it works or not. So let's see here. Let's see if I can get you in the shot. Let me just strip this back a little bit. And I'm going to throw a little bead of solder on there too. Solder bead right there. We're going to melt that off and we're going to try to go right back into place, same place. Hope that's focused. Let's see if we can get. I don't know where my sponge went, but I'm gonna use a little small straight screwdriver to help me heat this up and get it off here. Oh, I got a bad tip. Bad tip. Somebody didn't clean the tip. Need more hands. Need more hands. All right, let's see if we can get it to sit right there in thin air. using the existing I think that might be it should we do this one while we're at it yeah let's you know what let's uh, let's make sure we've got a nice connection here it ended up breaking off so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that so we're just gonna strip that down that's gonna make the the wires equal uh equal length will make things a lot better and keep it from binding up so let's solder this baby on i want it to come down like this there we go two new uh, solder there all right let's get this other clip back in I'm just gonna put him right here and now let's get our relief all right just like that excuse my mess here it keeps twisting there we go Alright, we've 
We've got a relief. So that we don't pull the cable out, which is probably part of the problem to begin with. Probably got yanked on. Let's uh, let's put our uh, our nut and our screw back through. All right, let's put our tip back together. So I'm gonna go spring first. Spring fuse. First, let me put my let me put this little ring around it tip there that kind of keeps it together a little bit so I'm just gonna drop the tip through like that and let's screw it together and see what happens press that fuse in all right screw that down make sure we got a good springy connection there so that's it back together I think we should give it a test All right, party people, so it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be, but uh, I thought we were gonna get something way more interesting. But if you ever need to repair one of those 12 volt plugs, hopefully I gave you a few ideas to look for and you can repair your own. You're gonna spend 10 to $15 trying to replace one of those things. So it's always good to repair them if you can. So I hope this video was of some use. Till next time, scale up and ride, van up and go. And just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.